So if I open it up, this is what it looks like. Isn't it cute? Look, okay. Hi everyone! Welcome to episode number 39 of the So Not Scary series. And if you're here, I'm really, really, really glad to see you today because I've got something really super important to talk to you about. Okay. As we all know, the coronavirus or a COVID-19 is upon us. And uh, a lot of us um, are struggling to find basic necessities in grocery stores. For example, fruit and vegetables and breads and grains, pasta, and last but not the least, toilet paper, okay? Now, uh, if you've seen videos on television, and I'm sure you all must have done so, you will see that out in the markets, um, on the supermarkets, toilet paper is an acute shortage, okay? Because people have resorted to hoarding it, and uh, they've basically emptied out shelves upon shelves of toilet paper in supermarkets and for people who generally do need it in their time of need they're unable to buy it and in large part if you are stuck in that situation i'm sure you must be panicking to a slight degree um and hopefully after watching today's episode i will be able to reduce your anxiety by at least a few degrees and hopefully offer you an alternative way of dealing with this crisis, okay? There are two types of people. Some people like to just use toilet paper and other people like to use water for cleansing, okay? Um, now, having said that, if toilet paper is short in supply, what do you do? Now, if you are open to ideas, you must have come across this idea of something called a family cloth, which I do not like the term because it puts a really dodgy spin on it, okay? But um, basically the idea is that people are using dry cloth instead of toilet paper for cleansing purposes. The problem with that, however, is that if you are not using water first, how then are you going to kind of collect the dirty cloths to wash them? Because if the cloth has something unhygienic on it, um, you really don't want to handle it too much before washing it, okay? And ev even if you do kind of end up collecting it in something, maybe a tub or a mesh bag like, like I've got here, um, when you do actually put it in your washing machine you can feel really iffy about hmm, whether i'm doing the right thing or not by putting all those really uh, unhygienic cloths in the main washing machine so without actually going into what's the best way of cleansing yourself as an adult i'm just going to give you a very quick example of my own kids i've got two kids they're very young my younger one is six okay um, they both go to school and by the time they come home from school I must admit they're both kind of smelling like goats because of all the sweat and the toileting and <clears throat> Whatever stuff they handle in school uh, Having said that once they come home from school I Do try to do one of three things. I either give them a quick shower or I put them in a bath or I wash them directly on the toilet, okay? Now, this last thing that I just mentioned, washing yourself directly on the toilet, okay? This is something that we actually practice very frequently and my kids always stay fresh when they're home. They've never had any problems uh, which stem from a lack of personal hygiene, okay? And the way we do it is that I keep uh, some of this stuff. This is... Uh, this is like a sensitive skin wash or like a shower gel or a bot gel, okay? Uh, I keep a large bottle of this in the bathroom at all times, okay? I keep a plastic jug in the bathroom at all times, okay? And what we do is I put like a tiny drop of this body wash into the jug. I fill the jug up with nice warm water, make it nice and bubbly. And then I wash their little tushies with it. 
and then they use their own towels to dry themselves okay now because they have already been washed with soapy water okay their skin is clean okay their rear ends are clean so the towel in itself doesn't get as dirty as what you would expect from the family cloth concept doing the rounds and today with this crisis of the coronavirus upon us, okay? I want you, if you are here, to kind of be open to alternatives of cleansing yourself because this problem is not going to go away anytime soon and you don't want to be stuck at home without any way of cleaning yourself. Today, what I'm going to teach you is how to make personal hygiene cloths that you can use after cleansing yourself with some nice bubbly water okay um, and these cloths are really nice because you can make them from old flannel bed sheets uh, old um, tea towels which have been used very many times and they're no longer needed um, old flannel shirts okay or even stuff that you can thrift from a thrift store okay you can cut those up and make them so today I'm gonna use a bit of both. So I'm gonna use a bit of flannel and a little bit of toweling or terry cloth itself. Um, and this is what they look like. So I've kept them here and they've even got a cute little handle on one side. So if I open it up, this is what it looks like. Isn't it cute? Look, okay. So that on this side is flannel and on this side it's a toweling cloth okay and it's perfect for drying yourself after you've washed your nether regions <laughs> okay so why the handle you would ask me well if you look closely on my desk here um, I've got some command hooks okay and really the point of today's episode is to provide you with a sustainable and even long-term solution for personal hygiene okay where you are not dependent upon um, commercial companies to provide you with much needed toilet paper and if they cannot give it to you in time if they cannot if they're if their supply chain is not efficient enough I don't want you to be stuck at home told about how to clean yourself after um, using the toilet okay so this is a really sustainable long-term solution for personal hygiene and obviously like I said the way I clean my kids we can use that ourselves as well use a tiny bit of skin sens sensitive uh, shower gel or bath bubbles put a tiny little drop in a jug fill the jug up with nice warm water wash your tissue and then use these really soft cloths to dry yourself um, and what you can actually do is in the family bathroom at home you can put up little command hooks on the wall okay uh, command hooks if you don't know if you're may if you've never maybe seen one um, they're made by a company called 3m I think I might be wrong um, and they actually come with this uh, really sticky strip I don't have that strip right now to show you and that strip first sticks to the back of the hook and then it sticks onto the wall and they're incredibly strong hooks they don't pull off easily okay and what you can do is you can have a hook for every member of the family you can maybe even write a person's name and stick it on top of the hook on the wall and then every person in the family could have their own drying cloth okay so it's incredibly hygienic because a you're not using this cloth to wipe away something dirty you've already cleaned yourself with nice soapy bubbly water okay and b when you then wash these clothes you can just throw them with the rest of the family towels because they've not got anything dirty on them anyway okay you were simply using them to dry yourselves and if you do throw a bunch of these together into the wash what you can use is something like this this is called a mesh bag and you can get like a whole bunch of these really cheaply on ebay um, and what it is is essentially a, a bag made out of mesh with a zip in it okay and once you want to wash a bunch of these cloths you just simply chuck them in together uh, zip it up and just throw the whole bag in the wash okay and the bag is incredibly resilient you can throw it in the tumble dryer it'll come out just fine okay 
So that is the concept of personal hygiene that I want to introduce to you, okay? You will never be dependent upon um, toilet paper companies, on supermarkets, on your local shop around the corner for your personal hygiene purposes. Literally, all you need is water and a toweling cloth and a little bit of soap, okay? And for very young people, kids, children, you probably, their skin is so sen sensitive, you might not even want to use any soap. Just wash their tissues really well with, with warm water and then pat them dry with this really gentle personal hygiene towel, okay? So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna show you how to sew these personal hygiene pots on your mini sewing machine. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start by taking an old white tea towel and I'll take a ruler and a rotary cutter and trim away those doubled up edges. But I'm not gonna throw those edges away. Later on, you will see that we will be using those edges in this project. So I'm just quickly cutting those edges away, nice and straight, and we are just left with a simple tea towel. Now I'll take my measuring tape and it shows me that the towel measures 18 inches long. So if I split it in three, I can get towel that's measuring six inches wide. So that's the plan, six inch wide towels. I'm gonna fold the tea towel lengthwise and square up one edge. And then I'll measure six inches from that edge and make a point, which shows me that's a six inch mark. And at this point, I'm going to drop a vertical cut to create a six inch wide towelette. Then I'll measure six inches again and cut at that mark again. And for the third towel, I'm just going to square up the last edge. And this will give me three equal rectangles, six inches wide. And now I'm going to square up the narrow ends of all of those three towels with my rotary cutter. I've got some pre-shrunk flannel and I'm going to lay down my towelette pieces on top and cut roughly all around them. And after I do this, I have three twin layers of tea towel pieces which are ready to be processed further. Now I'll take some pins and pin both the layers of the tea towel and the flannel together so that the layers don't shift. And then, taking the edging of the tea towels, I'm going to snip away the hard corners and also snip this edging in half. And each of these pieces is going, going to create the hanging loop for our towelettes. Now I'll start by placing the long end of the towel underneath the presser foot of our mini sewing machine and do four straight stitches. And then using our handy dandy thread guide, which if you remember, we used in this episode, I'm going to start sewing a nice, simple straight stitch. And this thread guide will make it very easy for me to sew an accurate straight line. When I reach the corner, I'm going to leave the needle in and swivel the project by 90 degrees and then I'll continue to sew, making sure that our thread guide is back again underneath the presser foot. And this is making my sewing process so fast, so easy. Um, I don't have to worry about the wobbly presser foot. Do check out the, my last video where I showed you exactly how to use this thread guide trick. Now a third of the way in on the short side, I'm going to insert one end of the looping strip and then using my thread guide and a small pair of scissors, I'm going to sew over that loop. And if you don't know why I'm using these scissors, watch this video which will show you exactly why we're doing this. It's a secret trick that we use with our mini sewing machine so we get perfect stitches every time. And because we will be using these loops to hang the towels, we want them to be super strong. So I'm going to stop and swivel back along my stitches and then stop again and swivel forward again. And this will give us nice three layers of stitching on that loop so that our handles are nice and strong. 
and I've attached the complete loop now and now I'm reaching the um, last corner of our project very soon there we are so that's the last corner where I have to swivel the project by 90 degrees look how easy it is with this thread guide that we've created and finally on the last side I'm going to stitch along until I reach the starting point again guys if this video is making sense Please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and do share this video because in times of our greatest needs, if you can come up with sustainable solutions to our problems, it's great if you can share them to help as many people as possible. So please go ahead, share this video. Hopefully it's going to help others like you as well. I'm now going to remove all those pins from the project and then I'm going to pass the thread ends on one side of the project and give it a tight tight double knot and then I'll bury the threads between the two layers and snip them off and now I'll take my pinking shears and cut away the extra uneven edges just beyond the stitch line and when I reach the side where there's the hanging loop I'm going to be super careful to bend that loop out of the way so that I don't snip through it and in this way our edges are not going to fray too much when we wash them. When we do wash them the first couple of times the edges will fray a tiny bit but not much further and there it is it's all done and finished. It's soft gentle and super absorbent and you can make it in any size you can make it bigger as well if you prefer and you can roll it up and store it fresh for use. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. It was a little bit different. It might have been a little bit mm, falling in the TMI category, but um, we cannot stay silent upon issues that make us uncomfortable, okay? Because that doesn't solve the problem. So it's good to kind of discuss these and come up with workable solutions, which will help us survive this crisis together and, and hopefully at the end of it, we will come out feeling better and stronger about ourselves. So I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Please do remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I shall see you in the next video. Bye.